Hello everyone, welcome back. So in today's video, we'll take up two problems from the check your understanding section from the book Pathfinder and this is from the chapter of kinematics. So first we'll start with problem six. So we have a ball that is released from a certain height. It falls in the influence of gravity and it strikes the ground and repeatedly rebounds elastically. Okay. During a time interval of eight seconds from the instant it is released, it covers a distance of 20 meters. How many collisions during this time did the ball make with the ground? And acceleration due to gravity is to be taken as 10 meter per second square. So firstly, uh, let's write down what is given. So, so firstly, they specified the total time of motion and it's given as 8 seconds. And uh, other than that, we have the total distance traveled and it is given to be 20 meters. Okay. Okay. So now let's observe the motion a little bit. So this is the situation at time t equal to 0 seconds. So the ball is dropped some height. So now as we release the ball from a height of h, uh, it's going to fall down, let's say in a time of t naught, and then it's going to come back up in the same time t naught, right? Because the collisions are elastic. And then this cycle will keep repeating, right? So this will keep happening. So let's define the time in which the ball will hit the ground as t naught. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to consider this as one cycle, basically the motion from the maximum height till the ground, I'm going to call it as one cycle. Okay, and the cycle time is going to be square root of 2h by g, right? Because it's being released at zero velocity. So the time it takes to fall down will be square root of 2h by g. So I'm going to call this as t naught. Okay, okay. So once again, uh, this would be cycle one, this would be cycle two, this is cycle three, cycle four, cycle five, cycle six. Okay, so on and so forth. So if you observe um, for every two cycles, which means going down and coming back up, it corresponds to one collision. Okay, so basically two n cycles will correspond to n collisions. So now we are going to work with an assumption. Okay, and the assumption is that in the given eight second time period, the ball completes n cycles and obviously n I am assuming it to be an integer. And that's where the assumption comes into picture. It is not it's not necessary that n has to be an integer. Right. Okay. So now let's solve the question, assuming that this is the case. So basically if, if the ball has completed n cycles, then the total time would be the number of cycles times the time per cycle, which is T naught. So, and this is given to be eight seconds. Okay. Now T naught is also square root of two H by G. So I can write it this way as well. Okay. And the second equation is the total distance traveled. So guys, uh, in every cycle distance traveled will be H, right? Because going down, this is one cycle. So in this cycle, the distance covered is H in the reverse journey. Also the distance is H. So in every cycle, a distance of H will be covered. So in N cycles, a tot the distance traveled will be N into H and this is given to be 20 meters. So now we'll square the first equation and then divide it with the divided by the second equation. And after solving, you'll get n equal to 16. So basically we, we solved the question assuming that n was an integer and that's exactly what we proved as well. Okay. So which means our assumption was actually correct. Now guys, after odd number of cycles, the ball will be on the ground. And after even number of cycles, the ball will be at the top, right? And uh, so basically n equal to 16 means the ball will be uh, at the maximum height. Every two cycle corresponds to one collision with the ground. So 16 cycles means that the number of collisions would be eight. Now let's say guys, hypothetically, we got the answer as 16.5. So even in this case, we can easily work it out. So if the answer came out as n equal to 16, we know that the ball would be at the maximum height. And if it, if n came out to be 17, what that means is the ball will be on the ground. So 16.5 just signifies that the ball is somewhere in between here right? Somewhere in between these two stages. So n equal to 16 means eight collisions are already completed. So if the ball is somewhere still in mid air, then that means still the number of collisions is eight. After 17, the number of collisions would be nine. Okay. So that's how we would have figured it out if it was a non-integral value that we got. All right. So the answer to this question is simply eight collisions. So now let's move on to the next question. Okay, so in this question, we, it's given that during the last second of its flight, a ball thrown vertically upwards covers one half of the total distance covered during the whole flight. The point of projection and the point of landing may or may not be in the same horizontal level. What maximum possible duration of the flight can be obtained? So we want to make sure that the time of flight is maximum in this case. So basically in the problem, it's given that in the last second, of the motion, it covers half the distance covered in the total motion. So basically, let's say if the total distance covered in the entire motion is D, then the distance covered in the last one second is given to be D by two. Now guys, by intuition, we can see that uh, if this has to be true, then basically we would want the second point or the final point to be slightly below the first point, right? So that the ball will have more time uh, to cover a greater amount of distance. So by, so by intuition, we would assume that the second point should be slightly below the first point. 
So this would be like uh, projecting a ball from a hill kind of situation, right? But but the thing is, guys, if you observe something, there is actually another case. Even if you assume both the initial point and the final point to be at the same height level, in in this case, assume that the total time of flight is two seconds. So it means that it takes one second to go up and one second to come down. Even in this case, if you observe in the last second, the distance covered is half the total distance, right? This is a correct answer. So let's keep this answer aside and we'll check if this is the answer or not. Okay, so now let's talk about this gen this situation over here. Okay, guys, so now we're going to solve this question in two ways. One method is going to be lengthy and the second method is going to be really quick. The first method is the um, brute force standard method. We are going to make a function for time and then we'll differentiate it. Okay, so let's assume that we are projecting the ball with a velocity of u. So now using the standard result, we know that the maximum height is uh, u square by 2g. Now, now it covers the same distance for the downward motion as well. So the total distance covered uh, in this particular part over here would be u square by g. And now we have to add this distance to the u square by g to get the total distance traveled. So let's say this distance is some d. Okay, so now using the s equals ut plus half at square relation, we can say minus d. So I'm assuming the upward direction to be positive equals ut where t is the total time of the motion and minus half g t squared. Now g is given to be 10 guys so I'm going to write it as 5 t squared. So from here the total distance comes out to be u square by g minus ut plus 5 t squared. Now it's given that half the total distance was covered in the last second of travel. And guys the formula for the distance traveled in the nth second is u plus g by 2 times n 2n minus 1. Okay, so this is basically the distance traveled by the ball in the nth second. Okay, so basically the way we derive this is, imagine we drop a ball, okay, and let's say in time t, it covers a distance of half gt square, right? So we want to figure out how much distance it covered from t minus 1 at second to t at second. So for that, what we'll do is we'll subtract half g t minus 1 the whole squared from it and we'll get this particular formula over here. So we want the distance covered in the t at second, so we'll substitute it for t okay so and we also know that guys the in the th second the displacement is going to be negative i'm taking the downward direction as positive so which means sn sn would be positive now now as i took the downward direction as positive the upward direction would become negative so this would be minus u and the gravity will be positive in this case so plus five times 2t minus one so this is the distance traveled in the last second Okay. Okay. So now all we have to do is equate equate the last second distance uh, to half of the total distance. So now let's rearrange the expression a bit. Okay. So now we have a quadratic in t. Okay. So now let's write down the solutions for t using the quadratic formula. Okay. Then we get this expression. So here, as you can see, 40u just cancels out, and finally we end up with this uh, these two values for. Now out of these two values guys, we'll obviously choose uh, the root alpha plus beta and the reason is we want the maximum time, right? So obviously we don't want the smaller root and in fact, if you pick the smaller root and try to maximize it, uh, you will get the answer as two seconds, which is what we figured out earlier, right? So we want the maximum time. So we'll choose the positive root. Okay, so now uh, this is the value of the time t for a given projection value for a given projection speed u. So uh, as it is clearly a function of u, now we'll differentiate it with respect to u and set it equal to zero to find out its maximum. So now we'll do dt by du equals zero. And from here, if you differentiate this term, you'll get one. Now we have to differentiate the square root. So that will be one by two square root of 200 minus u squared times minus two u and then we'll set it equal to zero. u square turns out to be 100 or u equals. So this is the point where the time is actually a maximum. So now if I put back u to the time expression, uh, I'll get it as 30. A square root of 100 would be, square root of 100 would be 10 divided by 10. And this turns out to be four seconds. Now, if we had chosen the negative root, if you observe, if I put 10 meter per second back, 30 minus 10 by 10, which is actually two seconds, right? So this is the answer that we got initially, assuming the same level case. And out of both of these, the answer to the question will be the greater time. The answer would be four seconds, okay? So now let's look at a shorter method. Okay, guys, so now again, let's say hypothetically, I project the ball with some velocity v and obviously it's going to reach the maximum height in a time of u by g so let's just call that particular time as delta t so it reaches the maximum height in a time of delta t and after one more delta t time it will again come back to the original height level 
okay and that we can easily see by symmetry right so now what we'll do is guys we will use galileo's rule of odd numbers we'll forget about this part of the motion okay and we'll just observe the right part of the motion so this is like a free fall right what galileo's rule says is that if in a time period of delta t the ball undergoing free fall covers a distance of d then in the next time period of delta t it will cover a distance of 3d and in the next corresponding delta t it will cover a distance of 5d and so on so, so as you can see the numbers are odd numbers right so first it will cover d then it will cover 3d so on and so forth mm, so we know in in a time of delta t the ball reaches the maximum height so let's just observe the motion in delta t time periods so now the ball is at maximum height and in the next delta t time period it it will cover a distance of h right which is the maximum height so basically in the first delta t time period it moves up by a distance of h right and in the next delta t time period it moves down by a distance of h okay and for the next delta t time period it will move down an extra distance by 3 h and this we can figure out using galileo's law so if so the ball in the first delta t time period falls down by h in the next delta t time period it falls down by 3 h so on and so forth and for the time period after this it will cover a distance of 5 h so here if you try to figure out the total distance uh, it will be actually 10 h and if you observe this delta t time period over here which is uh, from 3 delta t to 4 delta t if you observe that time frame, the ball covers a distance of 5h, which is actually half of 10h, right? So it matches with what is being asked in the question. If I choose delta t to be equal to 1 second, if I choose delta t to be equal to 1 second, then in the last one second, it will cover a 5h distance, which is exactly what we want. And if I choose delta t equal to 1 second, I mean, the total time period is 4 delta t, right? So from here, the total time uh, is nothing but 4 delta t which is actually four seconds. So this would be the shorter way to do this question. Okay, so that was it for this video, guys. Uh, I'll bring more videos in future. If you enjoyed the video, please do share these videos with your friends. Okay, and yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching.